has the rally gone too much, too fast? Let's put that question and others to Marvin Chen, our Bloomberg Intelligence Equity Strategy Analyst, to talk through this. Has it gone too fast, Marvin? Yeah, I mean, if we look at the momentum indicators that you just mentioned, it's definitely signally overbought. Um, but we think uh, there's an element of uh, fear of missing out that's kind of driving this market rally. Mm. Um, you know, we took a look at the uh, EM fund manager positioning. Uh, you know, the, the, the active weight for China was still declining in the first quarter. So, um, you know, we're, we're seeing this uh, rebalancing, scrambling, and this is what has really been powering the uh, sharp move up since April. Um, from a valuation perspective, um, you know, uh, China, Hong Kong is still relatively undemanding compared to global markets, but we are kind of nearing these uh, near-term averages. So we think earnings are going to have to be uh, doing more of the legwork going forward. Right. And uh, weightings and exposure to China from EM funds, can okay, we at least assume that's, that's hit a bottom? And that, that simply goes up for here on, on the fear of missing out trade. Yeah, exactly. So we think the first quarter will likely be a bottom for, for the exposure. And, and we base this on two things that we uh, looked at. Um, you know, we looked at the uh, top 100 EM active funds. And we noticed that even though the, the weight uh, uh, towards China was declining in the first quarter, the pace was actually slower than the decline of China within the MSCI EM index. Also, we're seeing more of the funds that we looked at, around 50 to 60 uh, of these funds moving towards a neutral to slightly mm -hmm. overweight uh, position. So we do think that this, and this is something that we haven't seen since, you know, the uh, 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 the, the uh, re uh, pivot, uh, reopening uh, pivot in late 2022. Right, in early 2023, yeah. because it's been, since at the point, it's really been all India. And, yeah. you, know, the, you know, some of the funds, as based on your research here, that have outperformed, were rewarded because of the overweight in India. Is that is that changing? You think? Yeah. So um, we are seeing a, a shift out. Um, you know, particularly within the tech space, we, we've seen a lot of movement there. Um, mm. You know, North Asia, uh, Samsung, SK Hynix, right. uh, uh, TSMC. These were the really hot stocks coming into the year, um, and we've seen some rotation out of these stocks and towards uh, China winners such as uh, Tencent, which has really been leading the, the kind of uh, uh, mm. rotation. Yeah. Well, speaking of tech, earnings are just about to wrap up. I think we still have one more PDD, if I'm not mistaken, coming up. But, you know, what, what are your broad takeaways so far from this earnings season? Yeah, broadly speaking, uh, the, the tech sector um, has been delivering positive surprise on both mm. the top and bottom line. And this has been enough to kind of sustain the uh, momentum for the sector. And this has translated into gains at the index level as well. Um, what's interesting is, you know, if we look at the largest uh, eight China tech uh, companies, which have been reporting last week. Your tech and, eight. Yeah, the tech the eight. The tech eight. The tech eight. The popular tech eight. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they have contributed like uh, um, around 50% of the gains since this uh, since the January lows and this 50 percent contribution is uh, in line with the impact that Ma Magnificent 7 has had on the S&P 500 um, but what's more interesting is that you know China tech valuations are still trading at a 30 to 40 percent discount to the to their US peers so um, you know this suggests is there is room for some valuation convergence within uh, the tech sector and I think that's what we've uh, been seeing happening this rotation uh, going on over the past month. Right. Is there a case at this point, or might it be too early to, for a case to broaden out beyond a tech aid? Yeah. Um, well, for now, you know, this, the index move has been driven by the tech aid, but we, we do think that some of the steps, such as, you know, the property measures that, that have, that have uh, come up over the past week or so, these things are kind of broadening uh, the, 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 post, the potential uh, uh, momentum uh, within the uh, market. Property, I just to ask you about as a final question. I mean, it's a tiny percentage of waiting in this market. Yeah. But it's certainly, you know, a punch above its weight. It's, you know, some of these names are up 100 yeah. percent. How are you looking at property measures is, you know, as a function, I guess, of just that sector? Or is this perhaps also a leading indicator of the broader market, too, at this point in time? Yeah, we think it is uh, an important indicator, particularly for consumer and market sentiment. Um, mm. You know, there, there are some concerns that, you know, the recent measures are not enough to fully address the, the property supply issue. But we do think that there is value in the signaling effect of these uh, concrete actions that policymakers are taking. Um, I think we're seeing, I think we're seeing a shift in the policy implementation, whereas, uh, you know, in the past two years we had like, uh, you know, we may get vague guidelines with uh, 
a lack of details, but now we're seeing uh, 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 concrete uh, actions, and the, I think these things can uh, help uh, stabilize market sentiment. And you know, we we also may hear more on on the property front with the uh, uh, upcoming plenum in July. So um, yeah, I think there's there's more to hear on that front. Stay tuned for more regular programming if this market continues. Marvin, fantastic stuff and his research and his team there. Bi go for Bloomberg clients on your terminal.